And that, uh, to identify Paula, that's Paula Kelly of the Municipal Counselor's Office. Thank you, Ms. Kelly. Any other comments from Council? All right, we have a number of people that have signed up to speak, and we want to hear from each of you. Because of the sheer number, that we will have to limit the amount of time that each person can speak, and we're going to hold that limit to three minutes. So the process will be uh, that the clerk will inform me, or in my absence, Vice Mayor Salyer, when the three minutes is up. We'll then ask the person speaking to if they still need additional time to sum up what they want to say very quickly in a sentence or two, and then ask them to sit down so we can get to the next person. Um, with that said, let me uh, start calling people up. Uh, the first name I have is Paul Blair. And Paul, I will need your uh, name and address for the record, please. Paul Blair. I'm a citizen of the greater Oklahoma City area community. I live in Edmond, 4325 The Ranch Road. I'm pastor of Fairview Baptist Church. First of all, it was interesting hearing Ed Shadid's exposition of the Bible. I wish I had time. I would like to be able to uh, respond to that. But because of three minutes, I don't have the time. Mr. White, I appreciate your opinions. If you are that uh, offended by citizens of other communities coming to Oklahoma City, then we can certainly shop in our own communities as well. However, your decisions in the greater Oklahoma City area will affect all of us. Number three, regarding social services, the Bible very clearly outlines the particular realms of charity. If I give my money away, it's charity. If the church gives money away, it's charity. When the federal government, state government, or city government takes my tax dollars and redistributes them, that is not charity. That's not a realm of their responsibility, according to the Bible. But that just being said in passing. Three things briefly about this particular issue. Number one, it's unnecessary. As was noted, there's only been one alleged case of uh, discrimination within the last 12 years. We don't have a major problem here. Number two, why are we creating a special class of protection for someone's behavior? We're not talking about civil rights. This is not a, a gender or this is not a race. This is protecting someone's behavior. In all studies, whether Kinsey's, whether Masters and Johnson's, say that homosexuality is largely a learned behavior. Number three, don't forget the T in GLBT. The GLBT community, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender, act as one. The transgender, what are you going to do? When you pass these kind of policies, excuse me, mouth's dry, and all of a sudden you've got Jim in accounting that decides he wishes to wear a miniskirt to work one day. Well, are you going to discriminate against him and send him home? What are you going to do when uh, uh, Officer Jones decides that he wishes to take a shower in the women's locker room because he's feeling like a woman that day? And by the way, what about the rights of that Christian woman or even the Muslim police officer, as I see Muslim uh, community represented in, in, in the chambers this, this afternoon or this morning? What about that woman's rights when she has to go to the shower and find some hairy-legged man in there wishing to shower with you or with her, and you all will not run the risk of discriminating against his uh, civil rights, supposedly? Excuse me. Anyway, that's all I had to share. I hope that you consider those things as have far-reaching consequences. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. So, next up is Mrs. Lobna Huidi from the Mercy School. I'm not sure if I understood that. I'm sorry, we have two reps from the class, so I, I'm going to speak late. Uh, I think one other one's going to speak a bit later. They're under the same name, so we didn't well, and, it. and who are you? Uh, my name is Munir Wad. I live in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Um, do you need address? No, but I'm, I'm okay. unclear why she isn't speaking when I called her up. Because so, we're all under, I just put us under her, the class of her, uh, her class's name. She's Mrs. Lubna Hawadi um, with her class on a field trip. Okay, is she going to speak? Uh, another student is going to speak. Uh, later, we have, has she signed up? Yes, yes. So, so you're speaking in, instead of her? No, I'm speaking as a representative for Miss Lubna Wadi's class. So you're speaking for her at this point for the class? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, the Muslim woman's reaction to a hairy-legged man in the shower is no different than any other woman's reaction to a hairy-legged man in the shower. Um, I just uh, I felt compelled to speak uh, after hearing a few things, and just to keep it very short, I don't think you have to be a minority to have a monopoly over this topic. Uh, I'm not necessarily the descendant of slaves here, but 
I come from a religious community that has been targeted by the state recently and does understand the need to protect certain communities from a majority. Uh, the idea that protecting a minority against majority rule as being a, some type of outside agenda is not a problem that I see fit to bring up. That's exactly what we need in our democracy. We do need protections for minorities. Um, and I just want to say that we brought this class here today to sort of help them understand what our government is about, what local government is about. We're hoping to help them see an example of how our community will stand up for justice and stand up to defend a minority. Uh, again, coming from a community that was targeted in the 2010 elections, targeted by all our state or majority of state legislatures, uh, and had an amendment passed that actually demonized our community. So we understand that this is not about particularly discussing whether the LGBT community is right or wrong with what they do. Uh, we are a conservative community. We definitely have strong religious beliefs that would align with many people in this room, but we also understand the importance of law. We hope this, com this city council will stand up for justice to protect the minority. We are a minority group that has needed this protection. We've reaped the benefits of this protection, and as someone that files many EEOC complaints, I also want to say people can't just get fired and say I got fired because of my race, religion, or sexual orientation. There is an investigation that goes on. The EEOC will not even take a complaint. They won't even uh, file a right to sue letter if they don't feel that there was evidence of any type of discrimination. Um, thank you all. I hope these girls get a great experience from seeing what you all do today, and I, I just want you to know our community is watching and supporting the, the rights of those that are a minority and supporting this cause for the sake of humanity. Thank you. Emmett F. Clark. Yes, my name is Emmett F. Clark. I live at 5500 Indian Hill Road, Edmond, Oklahoma. Uh, I just want to address Mr. what Mr. Shadi said about uh, all these corporations in Oklahoma firing people because of their sexual preference. I work for a major corporation here in Oklahoma City, the Hertz Corporation, for 22 years, sir. During that time, I was ahead of the human resources over two of their facilities. The practices that we uh, practice followed the federal guidelines as far as about discrimination. There was never in 22 years that I worked with the Hertz Corporation of any of our facilities firing anyone for sexual orientation. As long as individuals are doing their job, coming to work, and performing like everyone else, we had homosexuals working in our workplace in every facility here in Oklahoma City and around the world. So therefore, what you said, sir, was incorrect. Now, there may be some companies, one or two here and there, that may have done that. But the major corporations you're talking about follows federal guidelines. We don't need extra guidelines like Brother Paul said. It's going to affect us no matter where you live here in Oklahoma. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emmett. Appreciate your comments. Uh, next, uh, we have Jim Huff. Thank you, Jim. And if you would please give your name and address for the record. My name is Jim Huff. My address is 6912 South Harvey Place, Oklahoma City. I'm a constituent of uh, Councilman Greenwell, and I wish to uh, make some comments concerning the reality of uh, civil rights is not limited to just specific individuals who have been hurt. Uh, this is to be a, uh, an effort at being fair and just with everyone who belongs in that society, who participates in that society. My question to you, or my comments to you, have to do with those who have been, who are speaking in opposition to this. I have received emails from a number of different groups who are coming from a Christian perspective and they're using biblical passages as their justification for the opposition to this. Uh, I remind you this is a secular body uh, speaking on behalf of a secular city uh, that happens to have many people of faith who live in it and many people of different viewpoints who live in it. Oklahoma City's non-discrimination policy is a positive action for today's very complex society. 
From time to time, the policy must be revised and updated to further guarantee the rights of all those living in Oklahoma City. Women were not always considered equal. Uh, the various religious faiths were not always considered equal. Uh, those who are handicapped were not always considered equal. Those have gradually been added to this understanding of uh, non-discrimination. There is no rational reason to oppose the inclusion of sexual orientation in the policy's language. Most of what you hear have a biblical or a scriptural basis to it. Those who are opposing the inclu inclusion of the new language are already included in the protection of the policy. Some within the religious faith community are being very, and this is my term and I sincerely believe it, are being very hypocritical when they argue that the new language is not needed. They quote, all citizens have equal protection under our Constitution. They maintain we do not need to create a special protected class. Using that logic, the inclusion of a person's religion as a protected group is unnecessary and is a special protected group. I urge you to support the inclusion of the proposed language in the existing policy. I hope that you will look beyond the irrational, the selfish, the unreasonable argument from many in the religious faith community. Respectfully, I am active participant in my Christian faith community, and I again echo, there is no monolithic Christian viewpoint here in Oklahoma City. There are many, many different viewpoints on almost every topic. My faith is too important to be compromised by selfish and untruthful arguments. James A. Huff, 6912 South Harvey Place, Oklahoma City. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Huff. <clears throat> Next, we have uh, Vema Santo. Do we know who that is? At 1213 Summer Drive in Norman. Anybody? Perhaps not. We'll move on. Uh, <clears throat> Robert Lemon. Mr. Lemon? Good morning, sir. And Good once morning. again, we'll, we'll name, need your name and address for the record. And if you would pull that microphone down towards you just a little bit. There you go. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, my name is Robert Lemon. I live at 2705 Northwest 59th, where my, my, my wife, uh, Mary Lou, now deceased, and I moved uh, back in uh, 2001. I uh, first became uh, acquainted with uh, the fact that uh, there were those who really looked down upon uh, people of different sexual orientation, and uh, that was back in 1977 <clears throat> when I was, uh, when Mary and I were attending a church convention in Kansas City. <clears throat> And uh, that was where I first learned about such things as uh, homosexuality and, uh, and uh, Stonewall Riot and uh, uh, gay, straight, LGBT, all the terms that now are some, some of them are very common. And we, uh, I, I, we got very involved in that because Mary Lou and I both felt that uh, it was unfair to show any discrimination or bigotry towards any minority group. But you know, uh, things uh, go on, life goes on, and today I, I stand here, I'm 82 years old, I'm the father of five children, three straights and two gays. And uh, I love the, the gay children just as much as I do the straight children. 
and uh, that's the way it's been in our family. We uh, have no internal strife between people of different sexual orientation. That's true with my, my brother's children, my children, all of them. I, I stand here today, I'm totally convinced that there is nothing wrong with homosexual people. They're not broken and they don't need fixing. But what does need fixing is the attitude of a lot of straight people with respect to gays. I, uh, I am very, very much pro-gays. I probably, today, I, I probably know more straight people than I know gay people and regard them as close friends. Uh, Mr. Lennon, the three minutes has expired, so if I could ask you to just wrap up with one quick sentence, I certainly would appreciate it. Your time is up. Okay. Time's up. Okay. Well, may I, if I were to say a, if I were to say a prayer today, I, I would close it like this. I pray to God the day will come when. Uh, People will respect all of God's children, not just some of them, but all of them. Thank you, Mr. Lemon. We appreciate you coming forward. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, next to be heard, we have James Cooper. James, name and address for the record, yeah. please. James Cooper, uh, 2804 North Robinson. Forgive me, I'm fighting an ear infection, so if I sound like I'm in an echo chamber, I'm so sorry. Um, I had some prepared statements here, but I have to say, I've been sitting around watching and really listening intently to all the discussion here today, and I actually really would like to look at everyone in this room right now, all of you, because what I've seen today is us divide ourselves up into tribes. We nod in approval to the person we agree with. We nod in disapproval to the person we disagree with. And we do this before we've ever even had a moment to hear what that other person is wanting to say to us. Do we not listen to each other anymore? Are we not all Oklahomans here? Are we not all here to have our voices heard, to have conversation, to have dialogue? We are not tribes. We're not Christian versus gay. We are human beings. This must stop. Ed Shadid, who I'm in his ward, and I'm so sorry to go from the script, I, I just, from listening to people today, this is, this is what I feel. I wrote that story in the Gazette. I spent this summer researching the history of harassment and discrimination towards this city's gay and lesbian population. To my Christian friends, if you've not read this article yet, please do, because it was stuff I didn't know existed in this city, in this state. When I was third, in the third grade, some kids came to my house, friends of mine, with some people I didn't know, asked me to come outside and play. Right around the corner, they had amassed a group of larger kids to beat me up, and I promise you there was no other reason because it was stated over and over and over again. Faggot, gay. It wasn't nerd, it wasn't atheist, it was gay. That's why they attacked me that day. When I did that research and I learned that in 1969, one man was arrested in this city for going to a beer bar, kissing his three friends on the neck. And when he walked out of that bar, the cops were there. And they arrested him and put him in jail. And the only way they could arrest him was because in every state across this great nation of ours, in every state, what was called sodomy was illegal. And thus you could be prosecuted for it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not right. And he went to jail for it. 
10 years later, this club over on Northwest 39th and Penn, and this is documented in the Gazette, people were beaten with batons by police because they were gay. Beaten, and this is documented. This is in the Oklahoman, this is in police reports. My friends, Shame we've come a long way. Sum it up, please. Oh, absolutely, we've come a long way. But today we come here to turn the page on injustice. We are not the victims of history, but its makers, and we must stand up for what is right. And we must start listening to each other and have a dialogue. And I hope I'm here to help foster that. Thank you all so much for letting me do this. Thanks for your comments. Uh, Eric Rogers. My name's Eric Rogers, and um, I hail from Yukon, Oklahoma. My address is 3601 Mustang Creek Circle. And uh, I'll just go straight from this so I can keep to the three minutes. Um, though I hail from Yukon, Oklahoma, it is in Oklahoma City where I do most of my business and my life is spent. Whether I come from Yukon or I would come from Guthrie, Paul's Valley, or Tulsa, I would say that we have a responsibility as citizens to speak on behalf of the whole. Lack of speaking out is why the U.S. is in trouble today and the abuse of power so crumbled and harmed the sovereignty of this great nation. First of all, thank you for hearing me. Unfortunately, Mr. Sadid, uh, and I hope I pronounced your name right, I am I'm, uh, only allowed three minutes, but you have had much more than three. There's much to say, and I won't get theological, because I believe outside of theology, this is bad law. It is also not limited to homosexuals, nor is it hate ideology, a lack of respect, or anything of that nature. But it, this proposed law could be then construed as uh, to help those uh, that would look to animism, polygamy, transvestite, or other, con or, or even later, uh, if you want to get crazy, uh, convicts, molesters, liars, or any other behavioral choice. I realize that borders on hasty generalization, but in today's political climate, not far from foreseeable reality. Truthfully, my head was about to explode listening to what I consider highly slippery slope arguments, the result of which is unlimited bad law. As a citizen of the U.S., I humbly implore you as elected officials voted by persons much like myself of a state that is highly conservative and follows a path of intelligence and wisdom on most issues. Elected officials in a general way of life to vote against the resolution to amend city personal policy, personnel policies and to protect individuals of any sexual orientation. Amending it would open all types of flawed law. Though good intentions, this law furthers the disunity of this nation. Protecting a minority has no limits. Again, very slippery slope. Reality, Title VII is bad law all around, but time does not allow. Our Constitution of the U.S. protects individuals for choices they make, even if that choice is different than mine, and even if I do not like that choice. That choice could also mean punishment later. But with this proposed amendment, I believe that the general conscience of all Oklahomans would be betrayed if voted in place. We need to hold to our convictions as Americans and not to the wind of political correctness. Choices in life do not need to be sanctioned by law. On behalf of many others like me that cannot be present today, have not heard the issue or are quiet to speaking out on their beliefs, <clears throat> I implore you to vote no. Because just because other companies, countries, individual or counties, individuals, business owners, and etc. have imposed this law, does not mean that we need to follow. Why do we not why can we not stand against rightness over political correctness? To stand for our children and show them that we understand that the fact of our constitution protects individuals that choices do not need to be protected under law. Whether orientation, race, gender, we are simply adding another area in which victims can be created. Unfortunately, we are in a quagmire in this nation due to creating laws that encourage victimization, even perceived victimization. Mr. McAfee is correct, absolutely correct. However, I do not believe that even if something comes up again in the future, Eric, it I needs do need to you be to addressed. This is one bad law and needs to be recognized as such. Again, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Ryan Kiesel. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor and honorable members of the council. Uh, Ryan Kiesel, 1011 West Wrangler Boulevard, Seminole, Oklahoma. I'm here speaking on behalf of the ACLU and its many members in the Oklahoma City area as its executive director. Uh, I'd like to begin first by responding in part to what Councilman Kelly had said with regard to protections embodied in the Constitution. And in particular, the Civil War amendments that were passed immediately following the Civil War. 
But many scholars, and in particular constitutional scholars, realize that those amendments and their full promise weren't realized, and I would argue that they're still not fully realized, but weren't realized until nearly a century later when the Civil Rights Acts were passed. And I would say that this constitutionally organized body here has that same prerogative to pass laws to help rights and the liberties that we all anticipate be more fully realized by everyone. And I'd like to, you know, if we could just jump up to 10,000 feet and look down at the arguments that are being put out against this, because I think Councilman Shadid did a terrific job of saying why we should pass this, why our corporate partners have this in their policies. But look at the arguments against this. And the argument against it is essentially this. Please, City Council, don't take away the right of one city employee to discriminate against another city employee on a basis other than merit. That's what they're asking you to do. So we reject that proposition at the ACLU. We hope you, that you reject that proposition as well. There are concerns that there have been no reports of discrimination, and it's been learned through reporting and today that it's apparently the practice of the staff of the City Personnel Department to respond to reports of discrimination based upon sexual orientation. And we applaud them for that. But without formal protections in place, the current practice could be dismissed without a vote by this council. Without formal protections in place, employees are left to wonder as to the consequences of coming forward. Would you rather that an employee endure the discrimination for fear of consequences of reporting it? This morning, this council can end that environment of fear and intimidation. And let us not lose focus of what this resolution does. It simply says that an employee of this great city cannot be hired, fired, retaliated against, or otherwise be the subject of discrimination because of whom they are. It offers a measure of protection that is currently missing for Oklahomans who are dedicated to this city. It is a resolution that prejudices no one except those who would be prejudicial. And we ask you to strongly support this resolution as we do. Thank you. Reverend Chris Moore. Chris Moore. Okay. Tom Vineyard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. When Tom, I will need you to give your name and address. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's all right. Tom Vineyard, I pastor Windsor Hills Baptist Church in Ward 3. I live in Bethany. I own a home in Oklahoma City. Um, with all due respect to Mr. White, when our nation was founded and the founders came out of Constitution Hall, an elderly lady there asked Benjamin Franklin what kind of a government they gave us. And they said a republic. He told her a republic. It was not a democracy. A republic is founded on principles. It's founded upon values. And with due respect to Mr. Shadid, although Jesus did not use the word homosexual, he did talk about Sodom five different times in the gospel. And I'd like to read one of those verses to you in Luke chapter 17 and verse 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And if God is the judge, and he is, he was, and he will be, that's something that needs to be taken into consideration in making this vote. Let me give you some statistics. I sent this to you in email form. I hope that you received it. While there are, there are only 2% to 3% of the population that are homosexuals, they account for 60% of all syphilis cases. Homosexuals account for a disproportionate number of hepatitis cases in North America, 70 to 80% in San Francisco, 66% in New York, 56% in Toronto, 42% in Montreal. I don't think that's what we're looking for when we're looking to other cities to keep up with them. Depending upon the city, 39 to 59% of homosexuals are infected with intestinal parasites, common in third world countries. Again, I don't think that's what we're looking for when we look to other cities. Judge John Martaw, Chief Magistrate of the New York City Criminal Court, stated homosexuals account for half the murders in large cities. Again, is that what we're looking for? Captain William Riddle of the LA Police Department said that 30,000 of the sexually abused children in Los Angeles were the victims of homosexuals. Again, is that what we're looking for? Homosexuals commit more than 33% of all the reported child molestations in the U.S. 
Many homosexuals openly admit that they are pedophiles because they cannot naturally reproduce They resort to recruiting children. The homosexual group North American Man and Boy Love Association, NAMBLA, is a child molesting homosexual group whose cry is sex before eight before it's too late. The Lesbian Avengers, another, le another group, prides itself on trying to recruit young girls. Now, Mr. Shadid, several months back, they had the Gay Lesbian Pride Parade, and I'd like to give this to each of the council members, if you would please. This is what Mr. Shadid put into that, and I'm, I'm curious to know if, if you are receiving backing from them for this promotion of this, and if so, isn't that a conflict of interest? Tom, we have three minutes, if you'll sum up your remarks. Has there been an economic study done on this, on the impact of this, if lawsuits are brought later on because of this? Folks, you're making a decision that will bring down God's judgment on our city if you vote in favor of this. Thanks for your time, Tom. Batchelder. Thank you, Mayor. I am Nathaniel Batchelder. I live at 2912 North Robinson Street in Oklahoma City, and I represent today the Central Oklahoma Human Rights Alliance. A great city is known not just for its skyscrapers, but also for how it protects its minorities. This amendment is political only because some are using scriptures to protest that being gay or lesbian is a sin rather than a characteristic. The scriptures have been misused before. For 200 years, scriptures were used in this country to defend slavery. It's in the Bible, must be okay with God. For another 100 years after that, scriptures were used to defend racial segregation. And America actually considered a constitutional amendment to ban interracial marriage. So who should we listen to? Well, sexual orientation, whether one is gay or straight, has been declared a normal human characteristic by the American Medical Association, the American Psychiatric Association, the American Psychological Association, and the National Association of Social Workers. More people are convinced every day that this is a civil rights issue. Coretta Scott King, for example, did a news conference in 1993 at Dr. King's gravesite. She said, gays and lesbians have been with us since the beginning of our struggle for equal rights, and I'm not going to abandon them now in theirs. Oklahoma City's own Clara Looper testified for this very question in 2005 before the Oklahoma County Commissioners. She said, we are asking you to break through the chains of tradition into this century and make sure that all people will have equal rights. Don't discriminate against God's children. Voters have committed millions of dollars for the MAPS 1, 2, and 3 projects to build Oklahoma City into a modern, an attractive place where people and businesses will want to locate. So, will you now vote for Oklahoma City's future or Oklahoma City's past? I leave you with the motto of the Central Oklahoma Human Rights Alliance. Diversity means business. Thank you. Scott Hamilton. Good morning, my name is Scott Hamilton. I live at 2346 Northwest 11th Street in Oklahoma City. I had the privilege of addressing this body three weeks ago, and as of yesterday, decided that I would not speak today. But this morning, I find myself unable to remain silent. Three weeks ago, when I stood before you, I represented Cimarron Alliance, an organization advocating for and educating about 
Oklahoma's 365,000 gay men and women. I also indicated at that time that I am a minister of God in an open and affirming United Church of Christ congregation here in Oklahoma City. This morning, though, I represent neither of those groups, but simply myself. The things that I have heard here today sadden me, anger me, and make me more than a little afraid. To say that we are simply following what the law requires, Councilman Kelly, is not good enough because for too long the law allowed for the discrimination of people of color in our society. Councilman McAtee, you did ask me the question, what's the foundation of society? And I answered that. I'm sorry it wasn't to your satisfaction, but I said the family. I also talked about my family. And perhaps my family doesn't count as much as yours or those families also represented here today, but it matters to me. And families like me matter to me. I cannot stand here today and listen to the lies that I have heard espoused in the guise of statistics. These are not statistics. And to talk about sexual orientation as behavior is wrong. According to all accepted science today, one cannot change one's sexual orientation any more than one's eye color or right-handedness. And so we're not talking about behavior. We are talking about personhood. And to couch in Christian terms these so-called statistics, I'll call them what they are, they are lies. It's time for us to be truthful. It's time to us, for us to stand up as a city saying we will not tolerate discrimination against any person. Finally, this does not create a protected class. It says that no person can be discriminated against based on sexual orientation. That means every straight person employed by the city of Oklahoma City has the same protection. It's not a protected class. It's simply doing what is right. And I hope that you will all want to be on the right side of history caring about all persons in this city today and for our future. Thank you.